What's the scariest you've ever acted towards another human being, Part 6? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account 1. I was on a road trip with the family. We stopped at a gas station, and my mother decided to go to the bathroom. I waited in the car for a while, and then decided that I should probably go as well. Walked over to the bathrooms, into a small waiting area, and stood there waiting. Now, there were two bathrooms, one normal and one for disabled people. Both were occupied, so I stood waiting outside the one that was not designated for disabled persons. Having waited a couple of minutes, I started getting bored, wondering what took my mother so long. And since things were starting to get a little desperate, I decided to get my revenge on her by ambushing her once she walked out of the door. This might sound a bit odd, but I was quite young at the time, 13, and my family used to do stupid shit to each other. A moment later, I heard a flushing sound. So I stopped to the side, getting a perfect angle for the ambush. As the door slowly opened, as in slow motion, I jumped right in front of the opening, roaring furiously. The old man who emerged seemed to almost faint with shock, shrinking back towards the opposite wall as he slowly inched his way out, looking at me as if I was some kind of rabid animal. He then threw open the door and ran to his car, driving away. Account 2. Ooh, I have a good one. This is a single isolated incident from my childhood, and fortunately wasn't an early sign of sociopathy or anything like that. I grew up on a small farm with a brother three to five years older than me. He was always really nice to me, except when our parents' friends came over and brought their son, who was also three to five years older than me. They would pick on me mercilessly together, trick me into touching the electric fence, push me off the trampoline, play hide-and-seek and leave me hidden forever, all the typical bullshit. Well, one day, something that fuckhead kid did sent me over the edge. The only logical solution my six-year-old mind came up with was to hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. So here I am, trying to keep from falling over this hammer is so big. In comparison to me, I raise that motherfucker over my head and prepare to deliver the blow to the back of his head, as fate would have it. My brother saw what was happening and yelled, Douchebag kid, look out! It felt like slow motion. The hammer was in full arc. Couldn't have stopped it if I wanted to. And this kid whipped around just in time to take a sledgehammer to the face. My dad then picked me up by my head and smashed my face into an unlit grill. I didn't get him too hard, though he did need to go to the hospital. Just a few stitches, I think. Kid never fucked with me again, though, Eddie. TLDR hit childhood bully in the face with sledgehammer. My dad picked me up and slammed my face off a grill. Account 3. I'm a metalhead in high school. And I go to a high school flooded with preps who look down on anyone not rich. I am a pretty blunt and short-tempered guy. Anyways, last week in Spanish class, this prep started say I was a child molesting Satanist. Of course I was. What the fuck in my head? because it's a horrible lie that is just flat out fucked up and ridiculous. So he moves to the seat behind me and asks me how many kids I've violated. I turn around and look him dead in the eye and tell him, listen here, motherfucker, you think I'm a molesting Satanist? I'll show you molesting Satanist. I will fucking stab you before I violate you and spill your blood in the name of the true God, Satan. Now I'm an atheist. I'm a straight male and I'm fairly quiet unless spoken to or pissed off. This kid freaked out, told the teacher, and I got three days of sack. The preps haven't bothered me or my friends since. Apparently I'm the scary motherfucker in school now. My friend even spread the rumor that I stabbed someone for taking my food at lunch in my old school. I can't believe this actually worked, but it did. Account 4. My first summer job was washing and cleaning airplanes at my local airport. My boss was a nasty Scottish man who would constantly pick on me because I was the youngest girl on the team. One night after a particular busy shift of planes landing and taking off, we had a hectic rush of turnarounds to do. A turnaround is when a plane lands, all the passengers get off, we clean it quickly, and a load of new passengers would board. So we waited at the bottom of the steps ready to board this one plane. It was an Airbus A320. I was on the piggy vacuum. 
a vacuum which is carried like a rucksack on your back, and you basically plug into the galley power and race down the aisle, hoovering up all the crumbs in between the seats. Underneath and onto of the seats, a proper vacuuming should take around 15-20 minuets. But the no one air hostess insisted that we didn't need to do a deep clean and that she needed to turn the plane round in 10 minutes or they would miss their departure slot. She told me to whiz down the aisle and just get the bits I could see, so I did. She was happy and was just about to sign off on the job, and then the nasty Bosman comes along and grabs me by my ear and tugs me down the plane, pointing out what a shit job I had done. The stewardess was like, it's fine, just get off my plane, I'm happy, goodbye. The nasty boss made me re-clean the entire plane. The stewardess was then screaming at me to hurry up, my boss was shouting, I had loads of pressure on me, and then I noticed a busload of passengers waiting to come up the steps to board the plane. I finished, and the bosman swore at me and called me stupid before he started walking down the steps himself. I don't know to this day what made me kick him in the back of his head, but I did, and he fell down the steps and landed unconscious on the tarmac at the bottom. My colleague stood there open-mouthed. The stewardess stood there open-mouthed, and 150 passengers stood there open-mouthed. The plane didn't depart for over an hour. I walked back to my scooter and rode home. Don't know what happened to him, don't care. Never have I ever reacted that way since. TLDR kicked my nasty boss down the steps of a plane before takeoff, knocking him unconscious. Account 5. When my grandmother and I had to take my mom to the ER after her excessive drug abuse and threatening to kill herself, I was so angry with my mom at that point, I just wanted to get her to the hospital and be done with it. I wanted to be able to tell the doctors exactly what drugs she was on, so I went through her stuff, found some pill bottles. But then I saw a Ziploc bag filled with tan brown powder. She had a heroin addiction before, so I yelled at her, asking if it was heroin, calling her pathetic for getting back on it, etc. She then whispered it was my dad's ashes. I didn't even feel bad because I was so angry. But looking back, I get very scared of how little I cared. Account 6. Two Halloweens passed. I was at a college park dressed as Link. It was really fun, it was a big party, but everyone knew each other and whatnot. My girlfriend was dressed as Zelda. Well, this guy showed up that no one knew and he was hitting really hard and unacceptably on all the women and creeping them out and making everyone uncomfortable. He even hit on my girlfriend, even though I introduced her as my girlfriend. So after a bit, me and some other guys pulled him aside and talked to him, just told him to cool it off and maybe make him realize what he is doing and he can stay. It's cool, just stop being a creep, be appropriate. About a half hour later, he grabbed the ass of the hostess of the party. She is a friend of mine who I have known since fourth grade. That pissed me off and she was yelling at him and he wouldn't leave. So I grabbed him by the back of the collar and roughly guided him down the stairs to the lawn and shoved him away and told him to leave. He still wouldn't and then got in my face. So I shoved him away again and started to walk away. Well, he came at me again, so I ran right at him and pulled my wooden sword I made and came at him with it full charge. He ran away like a bitch. It was kind of funny, too, because he was dressed as a devil, so it was like fighting Ganon, but more of a pussy. Account 7. I was walking along a quiet road in the city, back to my car, and a guy stepped in front of me with a knife and told me to give him my wallet. I uppercutted him and he dropped. I could hear his teeth smash together when I made contact. He was pretty much unconscious when he hit the ground, just moaning. I took his wallet and rolled him into the recovery position and kept walking. Account 8. I was once visiting Amsterdam for a conference, and after the conference I stayed for two more days. But when I was in a bar, a pretty lady approached me and we talked for a while. She offered me drink, and I later came to know she was a lady of the night. No problem. I went with it. But the drink I had was tasting funny, so I asked about it. She changed her demeanor completely, telling me how she hated Americans. And there was GHB, gamma, hydroxybutyrate. In the drink I got mad, and I just went for her neck right then and there. People around S stopped me by force, and police were called. TLDR choked a hooker in Amsterdam for giving me a beer with GHB in it. 
just because she hates Americans. Account 9. This one time, when I was around 16, I went batshit crazy. A little backstory, I never knew my dad. And I had been sent away to a kind of boarding school that my mom really couldn't afford when I was seven. But it was a non-profit. So they took me anyways, they said, after having taken an initiation test the school did for all prospective students, that my overall score was the highest they had ever seen. The classes for the younger kids were done in groups of 15, 20 kids, so relatively small classes. In grade seven, you got a one on one mentor that would teach you all of your subjects. My mentor was a really great guy by the name of Ben. Ben and I became close friends throughout my schooling. He was the father I never had, but still, my mother was at home. I missed her tongues. So my then girlfriend, future wife, decided to take a trip to the town I lived in as a little kid. It turns out my mom had married a farmer and moved from the tiny place we lived in. So I went out to the ranch that they now supposedly lived on. When I got there, her husband informed me she had been taken by the sand people. So I took a speeder and found their village, slaughtered them all. Not just the men, but the women and the children. I slaughtered them like animals. Shit. OP was asking for humans. Account 10. High school. Senior. Break up with girlfriend who you've dated since you were a sophomore. Both of you get back to dating other people. By the time homecoming week rolls along, one of the traditions of HC week is cross-dress day. Backstory complete. It's the day before cross-dressing day. And I decide, as this is my last, I'm going out with style. Be over at female friend's house. She's the only female who has my size clothes. We're the same height. Would have borrowed GF's, but she was quite a bit shorter than I. Picking out clothes, get a text from GF that she's going out with a group of friends for dinner. Cool. I finish picking out my outfit for the day and head back home. My phone rings. It's the GF. I'm expecting her to say that she's done eating. And on the way home, she's bawling her eyes out at a friend's house. My ex's current boyfriend decided to try to make a move on her. Her cornered her against a wall and tried to feel her up. She screamed and escaped. Now I'm triply pissed. Not only did he do the fucked up thing of trying to assault a female, but that female happened to be my current GF, and it also means he was cheating on my ex. Ex and I weren't on the best terms. But we still said hi every now and then. It's too late in the evening to do anything, but I'm pissed. I call up my best friend and my ex's best friend, male. We decide we'll go talk to this guy. And by talk, I mean, I wanted to beat the living hell out of him. I hardly sleep that night. But the fun begins in the morning. It's cross, dress day, female friend I borrowed clothes from, coming over to do my make up. I'm wearing a baby doll t-shirt, a skirt, long socks and flats, full on makeup. The other two guys who are helping me confront dress and heels, skinny jeans and spaghetti strap top, it's the mid 2000s. Skinny jeans aren't the norm for guys. Yet, we three meet in the parking lot. Cheater boy is there, he knows he's fucked, so he brought a bat. Now from the outside eye, it looks odd. One guy in jeans and t-shirts staring down three cross dressers. Glorious sight to behold. From anywhere but inside the meeting. I can see him sweating, he's nervous, he knows what he's done and he knows who I am. He's outnumbered and knows he can't take us all on at once. I slowly step forward. My eyes must have looked some kind of crazy. I know this because they hurt afterwards. We're on school grounds. So by now, people have began to gather to see what in the world is going on. By now, I'm in his face. Ever watch wrestling and see how close the guys get there? Just like that. He's gripping his bat, not sure if he's getting ready to swing or not. No taking chances, I grab his wrist and clench. Mind you, I'm about six inches taller than him and he doesn't work out. I also have two years of age on him. Give me three seasons. I barely breath out. What? He mutters. Give me three fucking reasons why I shouldn't break your arm and beat you with your own back. Tell me why I shouldn't beat you, report you, end up in a cell with you, beat you further. By now I realize that with every word I've tightened my grip on his wrist. 
He drops the bat out a combination of exhaustion and fear. He's been attempting to speak words, but can barely manage breathing. I can see tears begin to well up. It was my first time seeing fear in the eyes of another human being. Sadly, that did nothing to deter me and only fuel my dominance over the poor soul. Well, Gladiator was always one of my favorite movies. I imagined myself then in the ring. Maximus Decimus Meridius, letting my opponent know he fucked up. But his fear wouldn't subside. He only shriveled in stature. His fear only made him breathe less and trade sweat for pigment. Answer me, Kyle. My last words that morning. It was at this point where I realized I made a mistake. We're on school grounds. There are people watching. There are staff and faculty coming. They saved Kyle, those faculty members. I was suspended for a day for threatening another student. Kyle was taken to court over what he did to my current GF. Sure, he only did community service hours, as he technically didn't do anything, but I won that day, and it will always be remembered by others until the whispers and rumors stop, as the day some white kid nearly got the living hell beat out of him by an Asian cross-dressing dude. Account 11. Playing football in grade 9, I was chop-blocked, blocked low, during a drill by a fat grade 10. Being even half nimble, I easily hopped out of the way and proceeded to hold his helmet to the ground by the back while the drill continued. He began screaming bloody murder at me, even though what I was doing was legal. As the drill ended, I let him up. And he freaked. He ran at me saying, If that's legal, so is this. I stepped out of his way, grabbing his face mask and twisted him around and pushed him to the ground, jumping on him, pinning his arms with my legs. I flipped shit on him, screaming in his face and ending with a hard crank to the helmet and a punch to the chin. He learned not to fuck with me ever. Account 12. It was like fifth grade, and I was at my friend's house for his birthday, sleepover. There were two or three other kids, one of which being this crazy ADHD long-haired hippie dude who I actually still hang out with. Anyways, pizza, cake, all that stuff happens, and then we head up in the guy's attic to watch a movie or something. When it's over and we're all trying to sleep, the crazy hippie kid starts rolling around on top of us and yelling and just being an annoying crazy fuck. He rolls back into the spot where he is supposed to be sleeping. But before he can roll back over us again, I jump out of my sleeping bag in tears and grabbed his neck. It wasn't about killing him, it was about sending a message though. I subconsciously wanted to scare him so he wouldn't do it again. Anyways, I told him to stop or something and then laid back down and went to sleep, TLDR. Nearly strangled someone in fifth grade. We're cool now. Account 13. I was fucking with my little brother's friends once when then we're all in the kitchen. I randomly took a knife from a drawer and said, You know I've committed every deadly sin except for one, and then pretended to throw the knife in their direction only for it to fly out of my hand and lodge itself in a wall next to one of their heads. They all ran, screaming for their lives, and I got in trouble for the wall totally worth it. Account 14. I, a 5-0 girl, got so pissed at a player on our high school football team for sexually harassing me that I slammed my car door open, knocking him to the ground in front of the majority of our senior class. Then, while putting my foot on his throat, I yelled, not so fucking tough are you now, fat ass, and I spat on him. I felt like tearing his face off. He never harassed me again and he lost 100 pounds shortly thereafter, so I felt like I did him a favor. Account 50. Went to bed early one night because I had an early morning the next day. It was earlier than I normally go to sleep, so I was tossing and turning. Can't sleep. Can't sleep. Can't sleep. Finally, I dose off after what feels like hours of trying to knock out. I was barely out and I start to hear crashing and banging coming from the street below. From my 3RD floor studio window, I could see three young guys, 18-20-ish, slowly making their way down my street to the bar a block away. They're yelling at each other, vandalizing cars, mailboxes, street signs, wandering in and out of traffic causing cars to blow their horns. I look at my watch and it's just after 1 on an AM, tired of their shit, I yell from my window. 
Move on down the road. This is a residential neighborhood. Fuck you. Go to bed, asshole. Ha 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 ha, I reply. Gents, get the fuck out of here before you regret not leaving. Oh yeah, come down here and say that to our faces. Those were the magic words. Now I'm normally not the confrontational type, so this was entirely out of character for me. But the lack of sleep and the bold-faced dare struck a chord with me. Shit had to be resolved. I threw on a pair of sweatpants, grabbed my keys, and go downstairs where they are waiting for me. They were not expecting me to be 6'7 and 260 LBs, and two of them start to apologize immediately. The third doesn't get a chance to speak. I walk straight toward him, grabbing him by the chest and shove him into traffic. He bumps off of a slowly passing car and tumbles to the ground. I turn to idiot, two grab his shoulders and swing him into jackass three. At this point, guy, one is up and coming at me and goes for the spear. One big ol' has him run headfirst into a telephone pole, and he knocks himself out. I walk over to dude, two and three, and say, Pick up your friend. It's time for bed. Not sure why I said that. I thought it was cool in the moment. I went back to bed and still couldn't sleep. My heart was racing, TLDR. Trying to sleep, three assholes making a lot of noise on the street below my window, start a fight, one kid knocks himself out, still couldn't sleep.